Hey there, happy Monday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour here. And I work on projects from beginning to end, so you can be part of the whole process along the way. Uh, so tonight, you guys, we are continuing on the Splendid Simple 2 quilt along. And uh, I'm uh, bringing back a block that we started ages and ages and ages ago and haven't finished yet. It's, it's my one unfinished block right now. Uh, like my one started block that I, that I never finished. And it's uh, the Betty's Bloom. So here we are. We're going to work on this guy again tonight. So, uh, you know, this is even back before the book was even out. So I have my color printout of it and I have it in my sleeve with uh, however far we got on it. It doesn't look like we got it all that far, uh, but this is foundation paper piecing and we're going to try and continue on this. After this, any new block we start will be uh, um, like fresh basically because I, I won't have any unfinished blocks after this one. Oh, you love this one. Oh, good, Gretchen. All right. It is foundation paper piecing. Uh, that's our process where we uh, we need our postcard and I have my add a quarter ruler handy. You don't need one. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit here, uh, but let's get going tonight. I'm excited. This will be interesting because a lot of this fabric, remember my fabric, my yellow fabrics, are, I'm getting less and less of it. So <laughs> it'll be interesting to find little pieces that work for this tonight. So, all right, I'm going to flip you around and we'll get going. Okay, Betty's Bloom. So let's first see what we have going on in here. So uh, while, I was, while I'm working on blocks, if I don't finish them, then I put them in a sleeve here and uh, we continue it later. Oh, there's a lot in here. Is there more than one page for this? Oh yeah, there is. All right, let's get everything out and just look at what we got going on here. Okay, it looks like there are B blocks. So I have four uh, B sections and I have four, what I can assume are A sections. So yeah, so we've started the A sections it looks like. Are they all the same? Yep, so I've been doing them all at once, it looks like. Um, so I'm doing like all the A1 pieces and all the A2 pieces, then all the A3s. So, all right, we, uh, oh, it looks like we only have one more on here. So A1, A2, A3, A4. So one more will finish off these. And then we have all of these guys to do. What else do we have in here? Oh, okay, so. Oh, that's funny. I must have cut out just shapes to test the size of um, fabric needed or something, maybe. Oh, we could do that again, maybe. We'll see. So, all right. Uh, I'm gonna set this aside. Yeah, I'm almost, well, I'm, I'm, I am a little less than halfway done here, but I think, uh, you know, we're, we're definitely got a start. So um, I'm going to continue on these A pieces. It'd be awesome to get these done today. And uh, then these B pieces will start fresh. So obviously we're not starting from scratch with this project. Uh, but when we work on these B pieces, I'll be able to show you um, how to start and finish one piece like this, one section, and then you put all the sections together later. So um, ultimately one of these B pieces will go on one of these A pieces and then we'll have like a little square going and then four squares together will get us our uh, finished deal it looks like. Okay, let's keep going. It actually looks like we have an extra little, um, there's one piece in here that we still have to do. So there's this little corner piece that looks like it's done separately from all this foundation paper piecing. So that's, that's interesting. So this is quite, quite the block. There's a lot going on here and foundation paper piecing from the get go 
um, is not the most totally beginner thing. I mean, uh, once you know how to do it, then it's easy, but you know, it takes some mind bending a little bit. So, all right, let's, let's continue on one of these. Well, first of all, we need some fabric. What should we do for our next color? So let's see if we can get this, this right. So this is our A piece. Oh, Barbara, you love this block too. Oh, that's good. Oh, it's really cool, the free motion quilt, the echo on the black. Ooh, all right, I like that idea. All right, let's just see if we can even figure out where this is. So this is A. So this would be, all right, so, okay, this part right here looks like it's one of these half square triangles on the top. So, all right, there, now I got, now I have my orientation a little bit here. So this would be the same as this triangle here. So this part here is this dark blue bit, then this um, little mini plaid is there. This is the brown. You know what, we don't have any white in here yet. Maybe it's time to bring some of our whites. Because remember, I'm I'm trying to do uh, a lot of background whites in my quilt. So I think maybe that's the easiest place to start. And I know I have a lot of white. <laughs> so uh, I think we start there. And actually, I think this is an opportunity to bring out white scraps. So we have all these white scraps. Well, it's all these scraps in general, but some of these might actually be big enough to use for this. Oh, that's cutting it a little too close. Yeah, maybe not quite big enough. For some of these smaller ones, I'll I'll get the scraps out. But all right, let's let's just go with the bigger piece. All right. So I think I will just press this piece here, and we will just work. Um, we'll just keep cutting away at this white fabric. I do have a lot of this white fabric and that's one of the reasons I wanted to use a lot of white in the quilt. Oh, I have not cleaned my iron yet. You know, I talked about cleaning my iron because um, I think I might have gotten some of that sticky stuff on and you know it really isn't moving very well so I'm thinking it is time to clean it. I'll have to remember to do that. Okay, let's start with one. I'm gonna actually put them all in the same direction so I can grab them the same. So, all right, we have done A1, A2, A3, and only A4 is left, which we're gonna do that white color. So, first things first, I am going to uh, just take a look at it. So, I am, since I'm on A4, I'm gonna, all I'm concerned with is the line in between A4 and everything that came beforehand. So all these came before and uh, it's they're connected, they're like touching this line here. So that is the line that I'm concerned with here. Um, I'm gonna cover everything up with my postcard here. I'm gonna cover everything up that I did before along that line. So only that one that I'm working on, A4, is exposed. I'm gonna, f I'm gonna, um, fold that along the edge here. All right, so this is the part where I get my perfectly lovely seam allowance. I'm gonna grab my uh, add a quarter ruler. So the add a quarter ruler has a little ledge on there that's a quarter inch. And why that's awesome is because I can just bump that up against my postcard here, get my rotary cutter out, and trim. And there we go, I have a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. So, okay, I'm tempted to do that with all of these. You know what, I think I think we are. We're gonna just assembly line do this. So let's, let's do that with every single one of these. And then we'll get white fabric for every single one. I don't do this every time with paper piecing, this assembly line way of doing it, but when you have so many pieces and they're, they're pretty much the same, it does actually speed up the process a little bit. 
if it gets to the point that it just gets too, um, like, if it starts hurting your brain, <laughs> like if it just starts getting too confusing, doing more than one at once, then, then it's time to just switch to just doing one again. Sometimes on these multiple blocks, I'll do one all the way through just to get a handle on it. And then I'll do the remaining, remaining sections all at once. Um, if they're, if they're the same, I never do sections that are different at the same time. That would just get too confusing for me. All right. Last feller here, covering up whatever came before flipping that a four over. All right, there we go. Step one complete. All right, next up, we got to get that white fabric. So what we're looking for for our fabric is a piece that is as big as our um, A4 piece here, plus a generous seam allowance. So a seam allowance has already been added on these three sides. We need to add it to this side. Uh, and I always like doing a little bit extra. So we'll do a hair more. What I'm going to do is just place uh, my fabric here. So it's a little tricky with solids because I have to remember what side I want the front and back. <laughs> uh, so uh, when I'm looking at the top of this, that means my, my right side, the good side is facing down. So I have to pretend that this is my good side facing down. All right. So it looks like if I align my fold, if I put my A4 piece on the fabric, and that fold that we did there, if I align that along the straight edge here with a generous seam allowance, then I need a piece like this. But I'm wondering if we can get some of these other guys out at the same time. Oops, it goes this way. Ooh, you know what? I think that's a little scary for me. I'm going to just cut them out one at a time. We're just going to go like that. <laughs> there, that should do. So I'm going to just hold these together for a sec there. We'll shimmy that off to the side and then we'll do our other ones. Again, we're getting that generous quarter inch all the way around this A4 piece. And I always get a very generous piece. I think it's it's easier to work with these big blob shapes than, than smaller pieces. All right, so that's the second. We can probably get Oh yeah, we can we can fit some this way. But for that I need like a little straight edge. So what I'm going to do just get my get the add a quarter ruler out here. Give ourselves a new straight edge. Oh, that's true. I could just take, you're right. I can just take one of these guys and use as a pattern for, for the rest of them. Good idea. We'll do that. So I do need the straight edge. I'm just going to cut across this whole bit here. There we go. I'm going to get my scissors out. Sometimes it's easier with the scissors. And this is probably way more than what we need, but that's okay. I, I like working with more than what we need. Yeah, that's going to be plenty. All right, and then here's a little scrap we can use later. All right, there, I should have my four pieces now. So let's get them all aligned. And I'm going to pin test these as well. So let's grab a few pins. All right. 
There we go. So I needed that straight edge here. All right, so this straight edge, if you fold it down, that should match the straight edge that we just cut with our add a quarter ruler. So like that. And uh, I'm gonna just flip it around. We are going to test uh, sew this and I test sew it with two pins. Oh, you're not sure if you did this one or not yet, Robin? Yeah, this one, I actually have a note on it that it's that I put 13 on it. So this is the 13th block that that we worked on here. So that was a long time ago. <laughs> All right, let's pretend press. What I'm doing now is just testing to make sure that my piece is big enough uh, to have covered all of our sides with a generous seam allowance and I have oh, plenty plenty so we're good here um, that one's ready to sew let's get the other ones ready to sew right away as well so again I'm, I'm just starting out by um, aligning that folded edge with our straight edge and then it helps me to pick it up like that and then remember these are both right sides so I got to put right sides together and there we go they match on that straight edge the two straight edges so I'm just kind of moving it to where it feels like when I flip it over it'll be centered and let's pin that I'll grab some more pins I don't always pin but I do like testing doing the little test so I always grab like a like two pins. And sometimes with pieces that are a little longer, like this one's a little longer, it does make it easy to easier to sew when they're pinned. All right, we're definitely all the way around our edges here. No problem. So there's another one ready to go. This assembly line way of doing it really is going to make this go a lot quicker. All right, my straight edge again, making it parallel to that straight edge. All right, looking good. Let's grab them both. Fold them right sides together. There's a lot of excess, which is totally fine. We're gonna trim all that off. I don't really mind the waste, the little extra waste for, for these. It just makes it easier. It makes the process, the whole process more fun, actually. Being able to start with these blobs and uh, have it have all your edges and seam allowances turn out perfect, like absolutely perfect when you know that it started out with these non-measured crazy, crazy blobs. That's, that's a fun feeling. All right, that's good. Covers, covers our A4 piece. Last one. That was a good idea, Catherine, to have um, the one that we cut already be our guide for the rest. I'll have to remember that for the other ones. So that's one thing you can do. Uh, you know, I had that extra sheet. I could cut out this A4 piece on my extra sheet and use that as my guide and just make a stack of them um, that are cut with a generous quarter inch seam allowance. That would have worked as well. Feels good to work on a piece that I haven't worked on in a while. This is going to feel really good finishing this one up. This one's been hanging out there for months and months, that's for sure. All right, let's give it a go. We are, let me just test this one quick. Yep, we're, we're just good. This curve just barely gets in. Um, so, all right, let's sew. Move all my tools over. All right, we're gonna finish this up quick. That's the nice, um, nice thing about this assembly line way of doing it. So I still have my uh, zigzag foot on. That's totally fine. I do not need to change that. Um, I had that on for uh, the sunblock when we were appliqueing around. I do have to turn it to a straight stitch though again and uh, um, 
make my stitch length a little longer than what we had it. So, all right, I'm gonna sew along this line now that we have pinned just exactly on that line. And since that line hits some seam allowances, I'm gonna actually go into the seam allowance as well for, for all of these. So all these should be exactly the same. So I'm gonna just cruise through them, remove the pins as I go. Easy peasy. I am gonna back tack. I can almost probably chain piece these. All right, just gonna back tack there, but I am gonna just chain piece these. So we're gonna just continue. I'm gonna grab the next one. Oh, Robin, congrats, that's exciting. All right, so let's do this next one. I don't chain piece um, foundation paper piecing like this very often, so this is, just feels funny to me. Chain piecing is where you just um, sew the next block right after without without stopping your sewing machine, like without cutting cutting your piece off of the sewing machine. And it, it just saves time and it saves a little bit of thread and stuff too. Oh, here's the next piece. All right, along that line. I do like this. I like I like um, doing all of these steps at once because next we're gonna press. We're gonna press it all at once. Nice. It's gonna be nice to get that out of the way all at once. And trim all at once. Yeah, this is gonna help us speed through. It's nice wind. There's that option. All right, here's our last one. All right, and this time I'm gonna pull it off the machine. Grab my little skizzers. All right, so let's scooch over here, just a little over here. I'm going to trim these apart and I'm also gonna trim, trim the little threads as I go because those get annoying in paper piecing. I want those gone. Yeah, it definitely makes it scoot along. So yeah, you'd think, you'd think that it would make this block take a lot longer, but it actually I think by having all these similar pieces, it's gonna speed it up. All right, so see by um, doing that chain piecing, I don't have anything to clip off really. I don't have any weird little ends to clip off, only at the beginning and, and the ends here. So that saves me time as well. All right, we're ready to, to press. So let's scooch over here, a little pressing area. So I am going to put my, um, the part that has printing on, I'm gonna lay that down because I don't want my iron to pick up that. It looks like I might have done that already once because I have this weird um, uh, ghosting here. That was probably because I put my iron on this side. Um, so I'm gonna put it on this side. And what I'm gonna do first is just finger press it. And that just helps me make sure that I get the edges that aren't actually sewn. Um, so I get those flat. Ooh, it's coming together. And let's give that a press. Ooh, that's nice. Looks like my iron turned off on me too. Let's get that going again. All right, it, it looks crazy still. I mean, with all these blobs on the edge, it still looks messy, right? But um, the next step, we are gonna get it all super duper cleaned up. So let's do the next one. Finger press this. All right. That's looking good. Oh man, you guys, I, it, it's getting warmer out, but that's making 
our bedroom so much warmer. Oops, didn't finger press this first. And I have not slept hardly at all for the past few days, ever since it got warm. So I, when I came home from the office today, I fell asleep on the couch and I feel so much better now. <laughs> uh, I don't know, do you guys get like that when the weather changes that it just kind of disrupts, disrupts your, uh, all your patterns? <laughs> Let me know. But yeah, holy cow. But it's just been so beautiful out. But yeah, I think it's time to put in our, our window air conditioner and ugh, that's a whole thing, so. But ugh, not always fun to feel like that. All right, so here are all our pieces. So we're done, we're done with uh, the A's. So last thing to do is to trim these up um, and what we do for that is they have this inner line here. You, sometimes, sometimes in paper piecing, they don't even give you the seam allowance like this. Like here, they've given us a visual seam allowance. They don't always do that. Sometimes you only get this line around each of your little sections. So I'm gonna pretend that I actually don't even have a seam allowance and I'm gonna use that line and I'm going to um, cut a quarter inch away from there. So let's get our, um, I'm just gonna get my ruler here. Yeah, it's an upstairs room and it's a half story. Uh, it's not a full story and it's pretty closed off. So even with the windows open, there's no real good cross breeze or anything. And I don't know, I just, I would never survive the apocalypse because of sleep, I don't think. I, I just can't just fall asleep anywhere, so I don't know. But yeah, I just like for the past three days have barely gotten any sleep at all. And so yeah, I came home and zonked out on the couch instead of getting any of my work done, which is a bummer, but it's nice to <laughs> get a little sleep. Oh, you had a warm weekend, turn on the AC, but you'll probably turn it off for the rest of the week. Yeah, ours, I think, um, I think it might start storming again by us here. All right, I'm just going around the edge here and I, I'm using that line right here. I'm aligning my quarter inch ruler. So if I'm, I'm trimming paper off, that's totally fine. But this is really gonna clean it up. And then we got a couple, um, I think I'm gonna leave, well, I'll just trim these points here. So sometimes, um, in a design, the designer will trim the points for you to help line up things later. And even though, you know, this is a straight point here, um, I am going to just follow their little guide here for these clipped edges. That'll just help us later, I think. There we go. Now look how that looks. Didn't, I mean, it, it turned from sloppy to like just perfect. <laughs> So there we go. I am not going to take the papers off of this until we have the B section done, until actually the whole block is done, because I think we're going to need some of these like indicators where things cross over these quarter inch marks. I think we're going to need some of that for um, putting that uh, putting the, the B pieces on here. So let's trim the rest of these and... Uh, See how we do on time. We might just start the bees tomorrow. We'll see. It might actually just be good to start fresh tomorrow, Tuesday on these bee pieces because then we can start the process from, from the beginning. So if you haven't done any paper piecing before, uh, I think tomorrow, will give you a little bit better sense of the process. I mean, today was fine, but you know, there's always something special you have to do for the first piece in your, in your uh, section. So like A1, all the one pieces so are, are special. 
they're treated a little differently than how we did this A4 piece. And I'll show you guys that tomorrow if you haven't done paper piecing before. But I just love it. It's it's just fun. Um, just fun not having to measure and cut perfect fabric from the beginning, you know, like with, you know, with the rulers and, and all that. I love just being able to cut these blobs and know that we are still going to have the most amazing quarter inch seam allowances and uh, um, just a clean, perfect, super crazy, intricate looking block. A block that you would never be able to only piece without the foundation paper piecing, or not very easily for sure. It, like the foundation paper piecing makes all this really intricate, um, these intricate looking blocks possible and in a really easy way, which I don't know, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, so I'm gonna just do the, just trim these up. We'll kind of lay it out and see what we got going on here. Oh, you're working on a, a tree with the half square triangles. Um, is that one of the blocks in here? I've not, I've not done that one yet. So I think, oh, we, I must have videos for this one already. So I think in, if once this one is done, I think I will have 41 completely done blocks after this one is done. I think the, the sunshine, the hello sunshine block that we did uh, last week, I think that was my 40, first block and this is part of those 41 blocks so once we have this one done I will officially have 41 finished blocks and luckily some of those are completely completely done um, they're quilted and in the quilt already really you know because we're doing that quilt as you go process so I feel I feel like I'm a little further along um, even though I only have 40 blocks done, I, I, I do have them some in, in quilt form already. So that's, that's cool. And, and we'll do that again soon, soon enough to more of the quilt as you go process. But we haven't worked on this in a little while because we took that little time away for the triangle tango quilt. Uh, so I'm kind of, it's kind of nice working on blocks again, but soon we'll switch over to making all of, do all that free motion quilting and stuff again. Ooh, another pretty, pretty bit. Got all these fuzzles hanging out here, though. All right, last one. The trick tomorrow will also be having enough fabric for all the sections. because we are getting low. So tomorrow might be an opportunity to try making uh, um, the shapes a little less blobby. Like we could, we could cut out the sections on our spare piece and, and use that for getting our pieces. Maybe we do that. I don't usually do that, but that might be a way to preserve a little bit more fabric. I think we run the risk of having the pieces be too small or, or if I don't sew them or place them perfectly, then we'll have a hole, which isn't good. Um, so we'll just have to be really careful if I do it that way, but it may allow us to have enough fabric. So that's good. All right, let's trim these little bits. Boop and boop. All right. There we go. So let's kind of just, I just want to lay these out. It'll be kind of a pinwheel at this point, I think. So, ooh, this is just going to be kind of striking, I think, actually. It's really pretty so far. Um, gosh, I almost just want to do just blank, blank squares for the rest, but we won't. We'll do the rest of the paper piecing. Um, so here, here's the picture of it again. Yeah, so now we got this other, these other bits here that are just going to be as detailed. So that'll be kind of fun. And then we have that extra little square in the middle that we need to do as well. Looks like I wanted to make these white at some point, but 
at this point, we're just gonna pick colors and see what happens, I think. <laughs> uh, that's kind of what this block actually looks like, though. There's, there's, there's a lot going on, so I don't think it's gonna matter so much um, what we choose here. But I think it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be pretty when we're done. I think these are really nice together. It's like little slivers. I like it. All right, so that is uh, what we'll do here tonight. So tomorrow we got our four uh, B pieces. So these will fit, uh, they'll fit right in like this. So remember when we're looking at this side with the printing, that's actually the wrong side. So when we flip it, then they'll go into these spots. So like if we flip it back this way, then you can see the A pieces will hook together with the B pieces and, and you can start to see some of the little shapes coming together there. So, all right, cool, cool. So we'll start that up tomorrow. We'll start with our B1 pieces and uh, we may even get real close to finishing this tomorrow, I bet. Especially if we do it the way that we did tonight where we just do one after the other. I think that'll speed things up. So awesome, you guys. That is that for tonight. I'm going to flip you around and we'll call it an evening here. All right. So back on the paper piecing train here. It is again. Uh, I think we'll definitely use this fabric again because there's that little line on the B piece and those looked cute when they were together. Uh, the rest of the fabrics we probably won't repeat. So I'm going to start uh, by grabbing the fabrics that I have the most of yet, <laughs> maybe. Uh, oh, but you know, this is an opportunity to use scraps. We'll see, see what we have. Maybe it'll be a combo of scraps and, and new stuff tomorrow. Um, paper piecing is always kind of a nice deal for scraps, although it's a little different with this one because we're repeating it four times with the four different sections. So in that case, um, we do need to have enough fabric for that. But when, we're, when you're working on a different project where all you need is a tiny little triangle, then it's perfect for scraps. So awesome, you guys. Uh, so that is it for tonight. I'll get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies if you wanted to check it out again. Uh, just see a little bit of the process and get prepped for tomorrow. And it will stay here on the Penguin and Fish page on Facebook as well. Yes, and on Finish It Friday. So it is Finish It Friday this week. So Finish It Friday is the first Friday of the month. We work on a project that's not our normal thing that's just been hanging out. This time it will be on location again at my parents' house. Uh, we'll be there again. My brother will be in town this time, which will be nice. And uh, I think we're gonna lay out the uh, triangle tangle quilt. Oh, I know the jean quilt. I still need to finish that too, Gretchen. But I think we're gonna lay out the triangle tango quilt. That's the one that we've been working on before this. I'm gonna lay it all out, and then there's uh, we have to rotate the blocks in a special way to get the effect. Uh, so we will work on that on Friday. So that is the plan. Um, so stay tuned for that, and then we'll label it. We won't sew anything. I think it'll take the whole time to lay out the quilt, but we'll we'll get all our rows together and number them, and so we should just be able to pick them up and sew uh, next time um, we work on it, which might be the, the finish up Friday for July. Who knows? <laughs> so all right, you guys. Thanks again, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Good night.